Welcome back to the channel. This is another video talking to you about how to use Ionic Framework to build React.js applications. Enjoy. Uh, this is a quick video to walk you through um, a solution that I've used using the Context API to hide and show um, the tab bar based on implemented detail screen. So you, you can see here as a, um, this is the default uh, this is the default application you get using the uh, template for my Ionic Framework. You can see here I have my basic tab. Um, one of the things I've done is I've added the ability to go to a detail page. And normally when you go to a detail page, it continues to show you the tab bar on the bottom. But the action that I have now when I go to a detail page, you see the tab bar is gone. And when I return from the detail page, the tab bar uh, is back again. So one of the things that I am really big on with React is using the Context API. So I will include the link in the um, section below, but I recently did a talk at Ionic Conference on using the Context API in React. It's a way to manage some global state across your application. So in this example, I'm going to, you know, once again show you how, how you can use um, Context API to control when the tab bar shows and when it is hidden. Um, so we'll also show how to do dynamic styles and we'll also show how you can use the um, uh, use effects API to simulate component will mount and component did unmount. Um, also I'll include the link below for the blog post that goes along with this video walkthrough so you can look at the text and look at the video and still see the source code. The link to this actual project and stack blitz is available so you can run it yourself to see how things work. So first let's just start with the context API. Um, once again I'm going to quickly go through this because it's covered in a separate video but the basic idea is that I create this context um, and in this context, all I'm storing is a variable called show tabs and a function called set show tabs, which is how I set this variable to true or false. When show tabs is set to true, it will show the tabs. When show tab is set to false, it will not show the tabs. So I have my context set up. What I do here in uh, at index.tsx in my application is I load up the, the provider for my context, which I've named UI provider. And I wrap the whole application with the UI provider. So this allows me to get access to the values from anywhere inside my application. Um, so now let's go to my app. Here inside my application, um, I can get access to the context here and get access to the show tabs property from my context. And what I do is I use this ternary operator to set my tab style. That should probably be tab bar style. Um, let me do that. Tab uh, E A R. Uh, let me up, uh, tab bar style. Change that there, and then change it here just so that it's clear. So what we're doing is we're using uh, my property to set the style. So if show tabs is true. Show tabs is true. Then I set the style to undefined, which is nothing. Other, otherwise, if show tabs is false, I set display to none, so it should hide the tabs. And as you can see, down here on the tab, on the actual tab bar, I have the style and I set the property appropriately so it will hide and show the tabs. Now the last part, which is kind of critical, is um, in the specific page that you want to hide the tab, how do you actually do that and how do you set the context? Um, so let's go to the detail page. Well, let me just show you here in the router. So here in the router, I have the tab two. So when I go to tab two, I render the page. And then on tab two, let's look at the source code for tab two. You can see here in the source code for tab two, I have, um, when you click on this item, it pushes onto the stack um, tab two details. And that's the page that I don't want to be visible. So if we look in tab two details, once again, I load in my context. And then at the top of my context, I get access to this function called set show tabs. Now use effects, um, which is a, a React API. And if you, let's take a quick look at, this is the context API, which we spoke about earlier. And um, here's the effect hook. And if we scroll down, if you're, See where it says here, if you're familiar with React class lifecycle methods, you can think of useEffectHooked as component did mount, 
component did update, and component will unmount. We're focusing on component did mount and component will upmount. Uh, component will unmount. So for component did mount, let's go back to our source code. Um, right here. Use effects will be called every time you render um, with, excuse me, use, use effects will be called every time you render. So what we want to do is when this is loaded, we will call set show tabs. Set show tabs will set our um, context variable to false, which means that the tab bar is hidden. And so that's what we're, let's see, this thing is uh, recompiled on me. So let me, let's get back to the start. Oh, let me save my pages. Right. What's going on? Oh, this thing is caught in the debugger. Let me close this window. All right. So now I'm here on my tab two. So what should happen is when I go into go details, it's setting show tab to false. So it's um, then jumping back to the app TX. So this because this state value changed, it's going to re-render this. And when it re-renders it, it will hide the ion tab bar. And then what happens is the if we go back to the hooks API, effects without cleanup, but we want effects with cleanup. So if we look at down here, effects with cleanup. So in this example, they want to unsubscribe to something. In our example, what we want to do is we want to set show tabs back to true when I'm closing my detail page. And so the way you do that, it says here, um, you provide a function to be called, where is it, right here. You provide a function, where is it? You provide this return function to be called after this effect. So when this effect is unloaded, for the cleanup, it will call this function here. Here it's an unsubscribe in our source code. When this component gets unloaded, we want to call um, this cleanup function on this effect. And for that, we set show tabs to true. So what that means is that this page um, controls the state of the tabs or any other page that you might want to hide or show the tabs. It's responsible for managing that. So when I unload the tab and I go back, you'll see that um, the tab bar is visible again. Um, one other thing that we can do is if we open this up in a larger window here and we show our developer tools, um, we can actually now go over to our components and let me make this a little bit bigger. Oh, that's the wrong way. Over here. We can go over to our components and you can see that when we start the application, if I look at the context, um, show tabs is set to true. As I switch to tab two, show tabs is still set to true. As I click to go to go to detail, show tabs has switched to false, which is what we want. And then when I exit, show tabs gets set back to true. And so we have um, the appropriate state that I want. This is just a quick video to show how to use the Context API to manage um, your UI state. And as you notice, let's get back to the code. If you notice here, um, I called it the, my context is the UI provider. And so what I'm gonna do in a follow-up video here is um, I'm gonna do two things. Uh, first, I'm gonna show you how to integrate the Ionic side menu component inside of uh, so we'll have a combination of a side menu component along with tabs. And then what I'm going to show you is how we can use the exact same concept of setting variables in state to determine when to hide or show the side menu. Um, I think Context API is an awesome thing. Um, I figure I'll just show a couple simple examples for use cases that you'll run into often so you can get comfortable using it. And hopefully it'll help you create awesome apps. Um, if you like this video, please make sure you like and subscribe. Please also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, my handle to all of those are Aaron K. Saunders. Also, you can see all the videos on the YouTube channel. I also have a website that links all of my videos and all of my blog posts on Dev2. It's called um, The Future is Written in Code, or for shorthand, it's www.fiwic.com. Thanks a lot, and I will see you next time. Bye now.